This is the AEW Control Center. Hi, everybody. It's Tony Schiavone. All Out is behind us. What a night it was. And now we're heading to Buffalo for another big night of AEW Dynamite tonight, live on TBS 87 Central, originating from the Key Bank Center. Now, the big news coming out of All Out, the return of MJF. A shocking development, as MJF was apparently the joker who won the casino ladder match with help from Stokely Hathaway. Now, we were not sure at that time, but we were sure at the end of the world title match, as his music hit, he walked out on stage. Tonight on AEW Dynamite, live from Buffalo, we will hear from MJF about his incredible, improbable return to AEW. Hi, thank you for joining us tonight, and welcome to AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite on TBS. Following All Out on pay-per-view this past Sunday night, I've been forced to vacate the AEW World Championship, as well as the AEW World Trios Championship. New World Trios Champions will be crowned live tonight in our opening contest in a fight between two of the most storied trios in AEW's history. Orange Cassidy and the Best Friends versus the AEW All-Atlantic Champion Pack and the Lucha Brothers, the Death Triangle. The AEW World Championship is the single most prized title in all of combat sports, and it will be decided in the grandest way possible. The AEW Grand Slam Tournament of Champions with seven-time world champion Chris Jericho, former AEW world champion and AEW world tag team champion Hangman Page, six-time world champion Brian Danielson, the all-time longest reigning TNT champion Darby Allin, three-time TNT champion Sammy Guevara, and three-time world champion John Moxley, fighting in a huge series of matches starting tonight. And a world champion will be crowned two weeks from tonight at Arthur Ashe Stadium in New York City at AEW Dynamite Grand Slam. I promise you that tonight is going to be a great night of professional wrestling. And AEW will be at our very best these next few weeks on the road to AEW Grand Slam. Thank you again. And back to you, Excalibur, Tony, and Taz. I can't wait. MJF. Lord knows I am, guys. I love Buffalo, New York. Hell, the greatest quarterback of all time, Josh Allen, is from Buffalo. Now, we're going to get down to brass tacks a little bit here, okay? Last time you guys saw me, I might have said some offensive stuff. I'm just being honest. But I think we can all agree I think we can all agree I didn't mean it, I was just kidding, right? I mean, honestly, everything I said I love AEW, guys! I'll never leave this place! 
the greatest wrestler of all time, and my personal hero, the game. That is what's best for business. Uh oh. Dude, this is not the time, and this is not the place, and I am in no mood. You need to leave this ring right now, or I will make you leave. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait a oh, second. Gosh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go right now. MJF Mox, let's do it. I hope Moxley knocks his ass right out. That Just might happen. Out. That definitely might happen. This is the chant of Moxley. Struggle with that shirt. Shirt's got him on a wrist lock. I don't like his chances against Moxley if he couldn't beat the shirt. Okay, okay, big guy. You, yeah. you rip the shirt off. Let's go. Mox is dominating the middle of the ring, saying, let's go. And oh, oh, of course. Yeah. Hey, your theme music sucks, by the way. Now, Buffalo and New York, I am in no mood. I am pissed off. I am embarrassed. I am pissed off about a great many things, but none more so than the fact that I'm standing here without the AEW World Championship. The only material possession in the world that matters to me, but the belt itself is just metal, it's just leather, there's a bunch of them, you can buy one online yourself, put it up on your wall, that doesn't mean anything. What means something to me is what the AEW World Championship represents. And that means something to me, and that means something to a lot of people. The AEW World Championship represents passion for this sport, passion for this business. It represents the passion of the guys and girls in the back and the fans that fill the arenas and watch at home. Those three letters in the AEW World Championship, they represent heroes during a pandemic at a time when the world needed heroes. It represents the dream, the vision that we all had when we started this thing years ago. And we wanted to show the world just what wrestling could be. The AEW World Championship represents taking the dark and ugly side of this business and letting it die with another generation. The World Championship represents the freedom to be as great as you are willing to dare to be. The AEW World Championship means being better than I was the day before, even if it's just a little bit better, even if nobody notices but me. That World Championship represents slaying demons. That World Championship represents everything I love about this business. This is great. Very powerful, very passionate. I love it. But the fact remains, on Sunday, I lost. And that's on me. That's my fault. I made mistakes. I got pinned. That's on me. I missed the game-winning shot. And I was supposed to be on vacation right now, like, until about two days ago. But here's another chance to take another shot when the game's on the line, this tournament of champions, and it's one hell of a shot. That's one hell of a big rock to push all the way to the top of hill, uh, the hill again. Chris Jericho, the greatest of all time. Brian Danielson, the best pure wrestler to ever step foot in a ring, a better wrestler than I'll ever be. Darby Allen. Hangman Page, Sammy Guevara, three dudes all younger than me, faster than me, more naturally gifted than I could ever be. So yeah, that's a hell of a shot. But winners always want the ball 
When the game is on the line, the ace always wants the ball. And I want the ball. So hell yeah, I'm gonna take the shot. Guys, I literally have goosebumps. This is powerful, man. Because this isn't just turn to win. This isn't just the fourth quarter. This isn't just winning time right now. This is time to be a legend. A lot. It's Sammy done. Guevara could be thinking six. No. Ooh. Sent on Atomico. Nobody home. There's an opening here for Mox. Regal, you know that opening's there. And he's That's open. He's going he's gonna to take it. He's going to ride. Here we go. Oh, here we go. He turns the corner. Two. And wow. Sammy just shot his legs straight up in the air to get out of that. Tough to kick out of that. That was both. almost almost a version yeah. of Wheeler Yuta's seatbelt. Exactly. Both those arms, your wings are pinned, man. It's tough to get off your back with that. Kudos to Guevara. But Will he, I get cancelled if I call these two ladies harlots on TV? I don't know. Well, there's only one way to find out. Okay, there's only one way. I found out, haven't I? <laughs> Sammy Guevara fighting up to his feet. Moxley saying, pour it on. Yeah, well, now this is where Sammy thinks he's getting a little ahead of himself, trying to go punch yeah. a punch. He's got slapped in a yeah. lip. Don't do that. Yeah. Look at those open hand shots rocking the head of Sammy Guevara. Sammy is damn near out on his feet. Oh, knee strike. The jumping knee strike catching Moxley underneath the jaw. The thrust kick on the point of the jaw. Sammy. This is it if he can. GTA, no. Moxley. Get out. Oh. One, two, three. Wow. Wow. Here's winner advancing in the tournament. John Moxley. What a way to open up our program, guys. That's a hell of a match. A hell of a match. A hell of a win for John Moxley who is one step closer to reclaiming the AEW World Championship next Wednesday night at Arthur Ashe Stadium at Grand Slam. Massive victory. Sammy Guevara had a hell of an outing out here, not able to advance. Mox might be one step closer. Regal, you gotta love it to be the world champ. He's one step closer, here we go. That's it, once it happens, it's over, but... Incredible. Great counter. Moxley anticipated the GTH counter, landed the Death Rider, and punched his ticket to the finals at Grand Slam. I love Regal. You got one more man in the semis coming yes. up later on. And don't think that I'm not thinking about what happens if that man wins as well. That puts us in somewhat of a... Seven days, John Moxley. Seven long days. I haven't slept a wink since me and you came toe-to-toe -to -toe last week. And do you know why? It's cause shut your damn mouth! It's because I saw the look in your eyes, man. You had the look of a man who had no fear, and you have no idea how much that pisses me off. See, you must have me confused with somebody else. You see a podium in this ring? Huh? You see an MJF 2020 sign? Nah, you don't. Cause I'm not the same kid I was the first time you and I crossed paths, John. Not by a long shot. Nah, nah, nah. Cause I ain't playing a character, John. You are. Walking around all tough, big, bad John Moxley. You're a joke. You're about as much as a joke as these schmucks. But I read your book, John. 
It was a real good read. I especially love the part where you talked about your childhood, because it turns out you were raised much the same as all these people here in Albany, New York. Uneducated, poor, white trash scumbag from the sticks. And you got bullied, didn't you, John? Cameraman, get in the corner. And you got bullied, didn't you, John? You got, you got beat down, you got your bicycle stolen, didn't you? And when stuff like that happens, it forces men to put on a front. And it works, John, you built a great character. That's why these morons chant your name every week. And they can chant your name all they want. They might buy a John, but I don't. Because I know you, man. Deep down, you're still that same scared, poor little boy from the slums of Cincinnati. Except the only difference is now, you're old enough to drown all your childhood trauma in alcohol like a worthless drunk. But I'll give you credit, man. You beat the habit. And it takes, you shut your mouth, fat boy! I'll give you credit, man. You kicked the habit, you got sober. And that takes a lot of intestinal fortitude, guts, bravery. You slayed your demons, you defeated your disease. But here's the problem, John. My brain is far more dangerous than your disease. And this is not just a message for you, it's a message for Jericho and Danielson. Bad things happen when people get in MJF's way. So Mox, how about you take that vacation you were planning on, bud? How about you skip Arthur Ashe? Because if I were you, I wouldn't want to be winning my AEW world title. Make no mistake about it, Albany, it's my title! You know what, John, when you came back from your little stinted rehab, you told a story about a demon. And that demon, it hanged over your head like a black cloud and it was in your ear and the demon told you that everything you've earned since you left those slums of Cincinnati, you don't deserve it. That demon told you he was gonna take everything away from you. Your family, your fame, your success, your fortune. Know this, John Moxley. If you do not tread lightly, you will find out that I am that demon! And I'm a demon you can't slay. Now, Albany! Let's get down to business. Not that that's something you can understand since you're all poor. A young group of gentlemen helped me procure my chip in the casino ladder match. All these men all come from different walks of life and yet they all share the same goals. Allow me to introduce to you the first ever stable on retainer led by a man who is my best friend. A man who I have known since I was 19 years old, and a man who's got more talent in his little pinky than any of you worthless pieces of shit have in your entire bodies. Some time ago, I flew from Orlando, Florida to New York City to meet my best friend, the number one contender for the AEW World Championship, Maxwell Jacob Friedman. This man was disenfranchised. He wanted to quit AEW until I told him, if you quit, you're gonna give everyone exactly what they want, and now it's time for you to get what you want. So we sat down and we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, and we came up with the logical solution. Everyone in this ring on retainer. We are MJF's support system while we gain more opportunities for ourselves. And, and, 
tonight is one of the rare times you will see us all together because when MJF doesn't need us, we will go our separate ways. So I'm going to admit something for the first time on national television. I'm not a publicist. I'm not a manager. And I damn sure ain't no assistant. Who am I? I'm a friend, just a friend. A friend who has a network and connections to make any and everything happen. And some of you all wish you had a friend just like me. Everything I've done since Double or Nothing has been a lie. It's been a hustle, a con, all to infiltrate the system. And how did I do it? You know, little bit of this, little bit of that. From kicking it with Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter to watching reruns of Living Single with the House of Black. There's not one rock that I haven't on turn. And where I'm from, there's a phrase, the blacker the berry, the sweeter the juice. And on one hand, that means love and admiration for our beautiful black queens. And on the other hand, that means that the juicier the gossip, the more power you have. And there's nothing like good old fashioned blackmail. That's what makes me wake up in the morning. That is what turns me on. So let's talk about what everyone here wants and what they're here for. Morrissey, Big Bill, I know what you want. You want to do whatever you want. And since no one here is going to say it, we appreciate you and I love you. I love you, man. I don't know if you heard me. I said, I love you, man. Lee Moriarty, my brother, all praise is due to Allah. I told you if you trust in him, he will provide, right? I told you that. I think it's time for this young man to become a star. And also bring some honor back to the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. And the guns, I think, what you want. He wants to represent his country, excuse me, his beautiful home country of Canada and do something you couldn't do before, hang around those knuckleheads. You want to win the All-Atlantic Championship. So there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are the firm and when we are around, you only have two options. Either run with us or run from us. Well, beware the firm. Yeah, Maxwell wow. Jacob Friedman putting his money to good use once again, Tony. How about this? How about him thinking, wanting, wanting the guns to be the next World Tag Team Champs? I mean, they have their. They have everything laid out, guys. They know exactly what You're they right. want. You're right. There's a direction. There's, there's motivation. There's, there's goals. Yeah, Lee Moriarty focused on the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. Ethan Page focused on the All-Atlantic Championship. This is a very interesting development here in AEW. It's one of the biggest nights of the year in AEW. As tonight, we bring you AEW Grand Slam and crown a new AEW World Champion. Hi, everyone. It's Tony Schiavone in the Control Center. Each week, AEW Dynamite takes the air on TBS for two solid hours at 8, 7 central. But needless to say, 
This is our biggest dynamite of 2022. As tonight, we come to you live from the Arthur Ashe Stadium in Queens, New York for AEW Grand Slam. Tonight, live on TBS, beginning at 8, 7 Central, we will crown a new AEW World Champion. It'll be the finals of the AEW Grand Slam Tournament of Champions. It will be a collision of two members of the Blackpool Combat Club. John Moxley meets Brian Danielson. No, I felt I feel fine. My, uh, my neck's good. I didn't get rocked. My teeth are in my head. My head's on my shoulders. So yeah, I'm pretty good. But I just can't wait to watch this match, dude. Brian and Jericho, because I think Brian should win. I want Brian to win. He's my teammate. He's the best wrestler in the world from a pure wrestling standpoint. But also, he's the best wrestler in the world. And if he wins, I have to face him. But Wrestling Jericho is no walk in the park either. That's what I'm saying, this tournament of champions, dude. It's like stacked, loaded. Like, Sammy Guevara, you think that was a walk in the park just now? Like, no, that kid's mega talented, faster than me, sharper than me, more athletic than me. Younger than me, he's less beat up than me. I mean, anyway, you slice it, this is this is a hard shot to make. This is you gotta walk through two, three, at least, you know, world beaters. So whoever wins this tournament of champions. 20,177 AEW fans are here. That's the Super Bowl, that's the World Series, that's World title, everything, all rolled into one. That's, you know, that's, that's as big as it gets. And ladies and gentlemen, what a night, what a scene. It's history in the making. When I looked at these brackets, I thought there was a good chance if I made it to the finals, John Moxley would be the person across the ring for me. This has been the most incredible night so far for the Blackpool Combat Club, but it's going to be the most torturous week for all of us. This is an incredible night for the Blackpool Combat Club. The two original members will be facing each other for their AEW Championship. Does that make it easier if I wrestle somebody that I don't particularly like? Maybe it makes it a little easier, but, you know, this ain't an easy game. You know, if it's easy, it's because you're not trying hard enough or you suck. Mox and I have trained together. We fought together. We've bled together. And now we're going to fight for the richest prize in professional wrestling. The Black Bull Combat Club explodes, right? I don't think me and Brian have one second to think about what our family at home is going to be put through when they watch this match. I don't expect it to be easy. In fact, I would be disgusted if John Moxley took it easy on me because he knows for damn sure I'm not going to take it easy on him. Do I admire Brian? Do I love Brian as a human? Do I want him to have a long, healthy career in the rest of his life? Yes, I do, in a perfect world. This ain't a perfect world. Brian Danielson for 22 years has been like a fourth son to me. John Moxley, we bond because we're both true villains, and true villains can't be anything else. We're the kind of people that would quite happily drag somebody outside and set fire to them and warm our hands on the flames. I know what they're capable of doing to each other, but at the end of the day, that's the whole point of the BCC. Who will be the world champion? Will it be Danielson? Will it be John Moxley? I've lost to four people. Four people since I've been in AEW. First person I lost to, Hangman Page. I beat him last week. The bridge back! Danielson does it! Second person I lost to, John Moxley. Danielson can't believe it! Third person I lost to, Daniel Garcia. I beat him. Fourth person I lost to, Chris Jericho. And I beat him tonight. Jericho on the verge, and he taps out! That leaves only one person that I have lost to, that I haven't beaten yet. And guess which one that is? This one. I don't lose easy, and I don't lose twice. When I step in that ring, this, this 
is what I'm bringing to the table. Because you say that you are the heart and soul of AEW, well, I'm the goddamn heart and soul of professional wrestling. I don't want to win. I don't know who that I win. I know I'm going to win. What an opportunity in the long and winding road of the career of John Moxley. Nothing else exists, and when that bell rings, when I show up to work, I put my working boots on, nothing else exists. I've been doing this for 23 years. Won every major championship in any promotion I've been a part of, except one. The most coveted prize in this sport. And Mox, on Wednesday, I'm gonna beat you, and I'm going to win the AEW World Championship. you see it? Well, Tony, when it comes down to teammates and... because I met her and she's a wonderful young lady. She's smart too, maybe a little too smart because she might have figured out what the rest of us already know, that you are a spineless, worthless piece of human garbage. And she's gonna walk out on you just like you walked out on all of us. Everybody, give it up for Wheeler. He has evolved. He has went from drying paint to pet rock personality. Incredible. <laughs> Wheelsy, the reason I came out here was to wish your buddies in the main event good luck. You know, the Blackpool Cuckold Club? <laughs> I want to wish them best of luck, because what's happening tonight is they're not fighting for the world title, no. They're fighting to lose the world title to Maxwell Jacob Friedman.
But don't you worry your pretty little head, buddy. You can still go to your mentors for advice. You can go up to Danielson and say, hey, B.Y., can you teach me how to become injury prone and turn my brain into scrambled eggs? Hey, hey, Moxley. Actually, you can't get advice from that guy. He's, he's not all there, so never mind, never mind. Hey, but you can always go up to your good pal, Willie Regal, and say, hey, Willie, can you teach me how to pop pills? Oh! Oh, this thing, oh, wait a What the hell? Come on, Max. Okay, that, that, that was uncalled for by, by MJF. Oh, that, oh, that's W. Morris. Yeah, part, part of the firm, and he is Bill. It's got the money. Oh. This is bad. Oh, oh, got it. With the ring. Up. With the dynamite diamond ring. Oh, well, never saw it coming up. Massive. W. Morris. He. He's crossed a line he can never come back from. No, he, he, you're right. And MJF has a lot of guys that are watching his back that are dangerous. This is d disgusting. We, we have to check on Tony Schiavone, but earlier today, he spoke to Jade Cargill. All the stops. That's what AEW's all about. Got and now, right here. What we're all about. Danielson pulling Moxley into the triangle yeah, sleeper. Yeah, Mox is in trouble. He's got to try and turn here. Got to try and an S grip pull up. Oh, look at this. Moxley rolls through, but Danielson's going to get a juicy guitar. No. Into the little bell lock. That's it. And Moxley flat on his stomach. Oh, oh, he's pulling the tap. Watch that right hand. The eyes of Mox is bugging out here. Circle towards your head. Yes. Yes, you swing the lower body. This sure. is just sheer stubbornness on John Mockers. Moxley's part. Anybody else would have tapped that. Yes, you're right, but it's so important. You have an opportunity, which are rare opportunities, to become the AEW World Heavyweight Champion. You've got to leave it all out here. Both these athletes are doing that. Let's see who gets the first blow in after that break. Danielson up to the top. Moxley, you can still... You can see Moxley, oh. he was Ooh. heaving for breath. Elbow joint again, he's set, setting up that elbow joint. Yeah, but he improvised on the top there. Oh, oh Death God! Rider on the stage! You heard that thud. And Danielson's momentum just rolled into the sense of the urgency, the sense of urgency, One, he's got him! Two. Oh, my goodness! Whew. Not sure how, oh my God. Look at this rear choke here, rear choke. John Moxley, the sleeper locked in. Brian Danielson fading. You see his head say yeah. no. But you see Danielson's trying to get separation between that the arm. Yeah, a little, bit, a little that, hand fighting. But right? that's even better. Break the grip. Attack the grip. That's right. the right thing to do. Danielson oh, reverses. No, Moxley. Didn't work. Rolls through. He's, he's got the he's, legs in. He's got him flattened out. He's got Danielson flattened out. Too much weight on the back. Oh, man, I think Danielson's done here, guys. Yeah, look inside here. Danielson is fading. Ball's looking around. All that weight. Ball's looking around. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That is it. Now, the winner of this match, the winner of the Grand Slam Tournament of Champions, and new All Elite Wrestling World Champion, John. Classic main event. What a tournament of champions. Unbelievable. John Moxley is your AEW World Champion. And Rampage Grand Slam coming your way. A special two hour presentation this Friday night, 10, 9 Central on TNT. Thank you for joining us here on Dynamite. We will see you Friday night for Rampage Grand Slam. MJF, we have a real serious problem, man. And it's not, it's not what you think. It's not that you got this whole new army of lackeys. I could have seen that one coming from a few miles away. No, man, it's not that you just tried to cheap shot me with the dynamite diamond ring because I've been hit a lot harder by a lot better men. 
Max, it's the fact that you had the audacity to put your hands on Tony Schiavone, a man who has done more for AEW than you ever will. And Maxwell, Maxwell, I think actions should have consequences. And what better punishment than for you to walk down here and fight me in my city? But Max, but hey, Philly, Philly, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't get too excited because we all know that Max just likes to run and hide. You know, he liked to hide behind the inner circle, behind the pinnacle. Right now, he's hiding behind the firm. You know what, he likes to hide behind his fake tan. He likes to hide behind his suit. He likes to hide behind this very uh, microphone, actually. Because Max knows that once the bell rings, he can't hang with me. So Max, Max, if you want to address these wonderful people in Philly, I'll go ahead and do it for you. All right, what do we got here? Uh, Charisma of drying paint, uh, pet rock. I don't think the Phillies have made the playoffs in like 11 years. He probably doesn't know that. I don't know, but yeah, all right. What else? Now can we skip to the part where we fight, where you come down here and you take the ass kicking to the third. Matt Jersey, Tom Seaver. Everybody give it up for Wheeler Uta, the hometown boy, huh? Yeah, from Philadelphia. You know Philly, the place you live if you can't afford to live in New York. Hey, speaking of embarrassing, hi, Tony Schiavone. How's that body of yours holding up after last week, you fat old prick? You're not gonna do a damn thing because you're a low-down coward, just like everybody in this podunk arena. <laughs> Except you, Wheeler, I'll give you credit, you're no coward. We practically grew up in this sport together. I have been wrestling you up and down North America when we were on the independent circuit just trying to make a name for ourselves, and I'm not afraid to admit you're one of the best wrestlers in the world. However, you made a big mistake when you decided to go toe-to-toe -to -toe on the microphone with Daddy last week. And Daddy had to put you on timeout, didn't he? Oh, yeah, Daddy had to spank you some. You know, I found it rich. Philly, I'm holding the microphone! I find it interesting you claim I don't care about this company, and yet here you are taking up a lot of TV time from the biggest draw in AEW. And to make matters worse, you're doing it by talking into a microphone. You, Wheeler Yuta, the... You, Wheeler Yuta, the guy who's got about as much as charisma as Joe Frazier present day. By the way, Joe Frazier's dead. Speaking of dead, let's talk about the fact that the Phillies are dead in the water and are never gonna win a World Series oh, he hit the ever line. again. Oh, whoops. Sorry, Wheeler, there's, there's more of that local sports team talk. It's almost like I don't give a shit. It's almost like at 26 years of age, I don't have to care because I make more money than everyone in this bum town. I make more money than you watching at home. I'm a multi-millionaire at 26 because... Maxwell, Maxwell, let's get one thing very, very clear. I don't care about your money. I don't care about your Mets jersey. I don't care about your scarf. If you don't want to fight me in this ring, I will leave you in a pool of blood on Broad Street.
You may not know this, Max, but bad things happen in Philadelphia. And tonight is no exception. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second. Ah, not so fast, Wheelsy. Not so fast. Colton and Austin Gunn, part of the firm which MJF has on retainer. Wheeler, I don't do brawls, but if you want to professionally wrestle, I'm game for that. So you want to wrestle me tonight in Philadelphia? Huh? You people want to see us go? No. no. <laughs> God. Hold on, hold on. I'll see you in the ring next week in Dumpy, D.C. But until then, remember this. My name is... Hold on a second. You people don't deserve to hear me say my catchphrase. I'm gonna go up in that skybox. I'm gonna watch John Moxley be an absolutely horrible wrestler. And I just might cash my check-in on the Blackpool Cuckold Club. Until then, sayonara. Tell the people my catchphrase. MJF is better than you, and you know it. Well, Wheeler Yuta having to wait seven more days till the anniversary edition of Dynamite to get his hands on MJF. Juice Robinson now, Moxley up on the shoulders, and now Juice. Airplane spin time. And Moxley, oh, Moxley lands on his feet. Oh, oh. Knee, the wriggle knee. Moxley, the lateral press. Moxley's got Dude, it. No. Oh, and did you see how Moxley interlaced the hands and now the stumps? Yeah, you can't defend yourself when a man does that. Oh, Juji Katami here, cross off break. Immediately taps out. There is your winner, the AEW World Champion, John. Moxley! Gentlemen, a wonderful evening. Thank you and good night. See you later, Riggs. And MJF looking displeased, but John Moxley, we know, will not be facing Juice Robinson next week by virtue of his victory here well, tonight. I'm gonna tell you this, guys, when you get locked in a Juji Katami, okay, a cross off breaker and some uh, you know, professional wrestling fans, so you'll see right here, this hold, don't take long to tap out. You got it, your bicep is extended next down. Mox you have to. Moxley snapped right into it. You can tear the bicep so easily. And that's what Juice Robinson had to be feeling at that moment via that good. And that's what led to that quick tap out. You gotta lift a fight another day. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Who's here? And he is power walking right to the ring. Hangman Adam Page in the house. And he's going to get a shot at whoever is the AEW World Champion in just a few weeks in Cincinnati on Tuesday Night Dynamite. Victorious in that battle wall at Grand Slam in New York City, eye to eye, the former AEW World Champ with the current champ. Well, I'm digging this, guys. This is big time sports. You could feel it, baby. Hangman Page. Putting the champ on. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Ladies, settle down, settle down, settle down. Don't you realize you're not fighting each other? You're not fighting each other, man. Okay, what you're doing is you're fighting to lose. Because once you two morons get to Cincinnati, I just might cash my chip in and become the new AEW World Champion. Because I am a generational piece of talent. Oh no, look behind you. Max, turn around, it's Wheeler! Oh no! It's not catering. 
A straight up attack in a luxury box. Oh, he gonna... oh no, no, no. These people in Philadelphia they hate MJF. This is Yuta's hometown. And look at Wait. Wheeler Yuta trying to fight off the security detail. My God, they're beating the hell out of MJF. Meanwhile, inside the ring, Hangman Page and John Moxley are just locked eyes. This is mayhem here. Craziness. The security I love the it. staff trying to trying to regain control. This has been a wild scene. That was wickedly wild. Nobody knew Yuta was up in that luxury box, especially MJF. And a little bit of a, a receipt from last week for MJF, Tony. The fans here appreciating the effort by both men as now Wheeler Yuta, uh -oh. the hammer and anvil elbows. We're getting deep, deep waters here in this match. And M MJF, is, man, he might be out right here. Yeah, look how the head of MJF is just rocking back and forth. Now Wheeler Yuta turns the corner, looking for the seatbelt. Seat yep. No, MJF, they can oh, salt, salt, salt to the earth. Got that Fujiwara on that salt to the earth, he's got it. It's in deep, Wheeler Yuta. Don't, we, Max, don't go back too far here. You keep the tension on that elbow. But there we go, Wheeler. Wheeler. If you pull that up, elbow through towards and his hips, towards MJM's hips, swivel his hips, meaning you to towards that bottom rope, which is helping alleviate that pain in that elbow and joint. You to trying to get the tip of his boot on the bottom rope to force the break. And oh no, MJM freaking out! He's there. tapping. That's it. MJ. What a battle, Taz. That was a very different modification of the salt of the earth. MJF, when he flipped over, he puts even more torturous pressure on the tendons of the shoulder of you. Everything, the AC joint, rotator cuff, bicep tendon, it's all getting tweaked and stretched on that quick roll. How MJF pulled that arm up of you. I mean, that was a battle. It could have went either way, but congratulations right there to MJF. What a return. Now, what a way to kick off this third anniversary. Oh, wait. Tense moment here. Sign of respect, show of respect by Yuta. Is MJF gonna do this though? Probably not, but maybe. I mean, here's the thing, MJF and Wheeler Yuta have more, more than seven years of history with one another. Oh man, MJF's gonna shake his hand. He's gonna give that man respect after a battle. MJF. Good for you, Max. Good for you. Oh! Wait a second. Lee Moriarty! I didn't tell you to do that! I didn't tell you to do that! What the hell is that? I didn't tell you to do that! MJF upset with Lee Moriarty of the firm. And Stokely Hathaway handing the dynamite diamond ring to MJF. Well, they're in the firm, they're in cahoots. That's part of an extension of MJF. But MJF, oh, well. I mean, he seems conflicted about this. Diesel better go deal with whatever he's got to deal with here. And he was about to get lit up. And Regal left the uh, announce position here. And MJF with that dynamite diamond ring on his right hand. But Willie oh, Yuta. Wait a minute. Oh, excuse me, William Regal. Just randomly pulls out Nux. <laughs> Press Nux. You want to talk about a proper villain? Yeah, well, <laughs> Regal's been born with brass knucks in his hand. But he best beware. MJF, even though he just went through a battle, he's in his prime here. Well, and also, MJF has the, the firm on retainer as well. Who knows where the rest of the members are lurking? Yeah, well, maybe Regal did mess up. It's no part of William Regal with the brass knucks. Well, the man just had a long match after 100, south of 130 days. Come on, Excalibur. Sure thing. What's he gonna do? Look at this. Man, he's trying to get to a vertical base here. What, this, put Roosh on his shoulders? Hangman with Roosh up. Power, power. Wow. And Hangman jackknife one. 
two, and no oh, Roosh kicking out at the last possible moment. I'm telling you guys, that is so hard to do in the ring from a physical perspective this deep in a match. I don't think we give guys enough credit for being able to kick out after taking oh. blows and chops and all the moves. Chad, you know, it takes uh, a lot. Yeah, right? I appreciate what you're saying on that, Shivani, because a lot of fans don't realize that a kick out exerts a lot of energy. Look at Jose. Look at Jose once again grabbing the boot of Hangman, but Jose sent to the barricade. Uh -oh, Hangman uh -oh. looking for Butch. Oh, no, oh. Roosh. The headbutt, the jumping knee. And now Roosh. Hangman's in trouble here, guys. Sure Big is. trouble. Oh, oh no. Holy smokes, it's done. Straight jacket, pile driver, two. And no, oh, Hangman able to kick out. Big time. You see the nose is busted or bleeding right there of Roosh. Okay. It then. doesn't bother him, though. Uh, apparently not. But now Hangman, after getting planted with that pile driver, he's down in the corner. Roosh spots it. Could be the bull's horns. Yeah, I think you're right, Excalibur. This man is going to bring it right now. Here, yeah, here he comes. You're right. Roosh. Excalibur. In the. Oh, no! Wow! Oh, he's going to buck shot, guys. He's going buck shot, buck shot, buck shot. Buck shot, Larian. Hangman, turn him inside out. He covers and gets the win. The winner of this match, Hangman Adam Page. Watch that first close line was hit by Hangman Page, man. You felt the sense of urgency to get ready on that apron for the buck shot. Awesome. Hangman leveled Roosh with that first one, but he left no question about it. Shot Larry and Taz. No doubt, man. What a physical contest. And now you see Private Party out here. Yep. Private Party, who was. They were getting. They said they had their jobs to do. You heard Jose give an ultimatum and Roosh. They were giving an ultimatum here. Oh, wait, wait, Fox! The AEW World Champion, John Moxley. Oh, 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 buddy. But what's Moxley thinking? I don't know, private party put the brakes on. Smart. Hangman Page stuck between a rock and a hard place. And could we see these two men collide 13 days from tonight in Cincinnati? I've been waiting for this for three years. Three years of AEW Dynamite. Three years of watching you. Three years of studying you because I knew this was coming. Three years of us circling each other. You know, between the two of us, we've beaten just about everybody there is to beat here in AEW except each other. On October 18th at the Heritage Bank Center in Cincinnati, Ohio, my home arena, the arena I literally grew up in, for real, we used to like smoke and drink under the bridge outside. On October 18th, there will be one last man standing here in AEW. In 13 days, cowboy, I'm gonna leave my house, I'm gonna walk down Vine Street, I'm gonna show up at Heritage Bank Center, and I'm gonna break your face. And I'm gonna choke you until you turn blue. Because you're in the way of me being the one true top guy here in AEW and the world champion and the best in the world. And I have all the respect in the world for your abilities. I have all the respect in the world for your talents. I admire you as a person. But when that bell rings with the world championship on the line, I ain't got any goddamn respect for anything. Oh, hey, hey. If, uh, if you've been waiting for this so long, where the hell are you going right now? Uh-oh.
You're a sweet kid. And like a lot of kids around here, you see. Mouth gets you in trouble. I'm gonna let you off the hook just once. But this is your final warning. You got 13 days. You watch your damn mouth. Moxie put it down right there. I mean, Hangman wanted to go right now, but I would take that advice. That MJF looks on Excalibur. Hey man, Hangman Adam Page, he's been to the top of the mountain before. He knows what it takes to be AEW World Champion. Will he be the next? MJF, we appeared to see a different side of you on last week's Dynamite. After your win against Wheeler Yuta, he tries to shake hands with you, and it looks like you were seriously considering taking him up on the offer. That is, until the firm Stokely Hathaway and Lee Moriarty show up and attack him. You also have this curious interaction with William Regal through all this. What the heck's going on here? Liz? Max, we did it last week. We caught Yuta lacking, and we put that boy to sleep. Hey, hey, I get it, dude. This is great, yeah. 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 The old dynamite troll. Ah, you yeah, know, I'm in the middle of an interview, that. and you interrupt me? Course, That's hysterical, yeah. 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 I bet everybody on this roster finds that so funny. But you know who doesn't find it funny? Daddy. Yeah. See, now Daddy's gonna have to put you on timeout. Okay, bud? See, and by the way, this is strike number two for you. See, strike number one was last week when you got involved in my business when I did not inquire you to. Now, if you do that again, Stokely, I'm gonna fire you. So now here's what's gonna happen. For job security purposes, what you should do is take your Carlton Banks wardrobe wearing ass out of my shot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> you wanna ask me about William Regal? <laughs> the villain, right? Willie, my British little buddy, in my world, you're about as villainous as Mary Poppins. See, me and you, we got a dark past. One I'm sure you don't recall while you're all the way up there on your high horse, but it is one I can assure you, you do not want to be reminded of, and trust me, I am not afraid to tell you the story. Wheeler Yuta, you asked me about Wheeler Yuta. Was I going to shake Wheeler Yuta's hand, Marvez? Quite frankly, I don't even know. See, I had to do a lot of self-reflection this past week, and I am coming to terms with the fact that at a very young age, I had to learn the hard way that nice guys finish last. And I'm not an idiot, man. I know everybody in this locker room hates my guts and probably wants me dead, and I'm sure that makes up a large amount of our audience as well. Well, guess what? You don't have a goddamn clue what it's like to be MJF. Waking up every morning, splashing water in my face, looking in the mirror and knowing I have no choice but to be the bad guy. I have broken my hand many a times, punching my own reflection. So you don't like me? <laughs> Tough shit! Cause guess what? When I walk through that curtain, I don't like me either! But that is what it takes to become champion of the world, and by hook or by crook, I will become champion. Because I'm the man with the plan, the man with the chip, and the man who is a generational talent. After three years, damn it's good to be in Toronto! And for much of that three years, I have been the AEW World Champion. And they have come from far and wide, all shapes, sizes, and styles, to try to knock me off the top of the mountain. They all think they want what I got, but they walked a mile in my shoes. See, being World Champion ain't all fun and games. It ain't easy. You got a target on your back. Everybody wants something from you, your time, your energy. You live every day in physical pain. Everybody wants to see you fall. And a lot of guys get there and they can't handle it. They crumble under the pressure and self-destruct some faster than others. The world champion does not have the luxury of being anxious, does not have the luxury of fear or doubt or hesitation or second guesses.
being the world champion is a dirty, dirty job, and you gotta be ruthless and indiscriminate. But goddamn, I love this job. That does bring me to our boy, the cowboy. Hangman Page. Next Tuesday night, Dynamite Hangman Moxley for the AEW World Championship. Yeah. Live next Tuesday in Cincinnati, and right there you see it on the bottom of your screen. It's going to be wild with these two colliding for the AEW World Title. But this thing could end up in a fight right about now. It's caliber. I mean, you can see Hangman is not in his gear, ready to compete. Nor is Mox, the World Champ. We will be making our debut at the Heritage Bank Center next Tuesday night. You still have a chance to join us. AEWTIX.com. Whatever you have to say about me, I want you to say it to my face. No, no, no. Actually, you said it all last week. You said you respected who I was in the ring. You said you respected me as a person. And I would be lying if I didn't tell you that coming from you, that meant the world to me. Because I have watched you for these past three years. And I've come to respect who you are in the ring and who you are outside of it, too. You are a hell of a champion, a hell of a father, a hell of a husband. And there have been times in the past three years when I looked at you and I saw the kind of man I wanted to be. MJF looking on. Remember, MJF holds that chip. He can challenge for the AEW World you Championship. You can watch at any all time. you want. You better listen. But last week, you shattered the illusions I had about you when you called me a nice kid. Is that how you feel about me, huh? You think I'm a kid? After all the niceties and compliments, you want to call me a kid? Is that how you feel about me? Huh? Answer me. I'm asking you a question. Am I a kid to you? That's exactly what I think about you. I don't think you are the same guy that knocked me off the top of a 20-foot ladder one year ago. Next week in Cincinnati, if you get the shot to take me out, I don't think you got it in your guts to pull the trigger. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm not the same guy I was this time last year. I hesitated in May, and it cost me this championship. I went for the trios championship with my best friends, and we failed. And I've had to watch as week after week they seemingly disappear. My old friends, they have disappeared. And for all that I did, I'm left with nothing. I'm left with nothing. So I'm not the same. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. I can't sleep at night. I'm anxious. I'm depressed. The medicine is not working, but I am still here because I am a man. I am 31 years old. I'm a former world tag team champion, a former world champion. 
I've watched my family members be lowered into the ground, and I've brought new life into this world, just like you have. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I've been choked till my face turns blue, and I've been beaten in that same face over and over, and I keep coming back because I am a man. Damn it. So I know what I have to do in Cincinnati, and I don't care if your cousins are there. I don't care if your sister's there. I don't care if your mother's in the crowd. I will beat you within an inch of your life to take this back, the thing that I should have never let slip away. And look at me now. Look at me now. I have nothing. I have a shot. And I have my word. Tuesday, I take my shot, and tonight, I give you my word. I will be the next AEW World Champion. That is my word. And unlike him, I wanted to make sure that I could come out here and tell you that face to face, man to man. It's pretty obvious Excalibur. The dark side of Hangman just came out, man. And I think Mox wanted that. We may be seeing the best Hangman page ever next Tuesday night in Cincinnati and Taz you're right that's exactly what John Moxley wants I can't wait till Tuesday night live next Tuesday AEW World Title Ocean yes now the butcher and the blade looking to drag the lake on drag John the lake. Moxley this could, could do it and Claudio look Claudio with the assist here we go again I love it fans the love of this come on best We're the love of this. This. come on sons. come on lads there we go Come on. Oh, what a great crowd here in Toronto. They, they impressed us on Wednesday, and they're doing it again here tonight. Butcher and the Blade, they fire first. Moxley and Cassignoli. Come on, back on a pair of lariats. You rely on what Dan brought you to the dance. That's power for these two dudes. Smash mouth in your face. Nothing fancy. Moxley and Claudio just hammering the Butcher and the Blade. This combo's kind of become a trademark of the yes. combat club. Oh, the Death Rider! Recall a bomb! One, two, three! Impressive. Winners of this match, the team of Claudio Castagnoli and the AEW World Champion, John Moxley! Moxley and Claudio finishing the match off in tandem, and Claudio scoring the win. Claudio, my friend! Let me ask you a question. Does the Blackpool Combat Club care who we get in the ring with? No! Let me ask you another question. When the BCC gets knocked down, do we stay down? Hell no! And finally, what is going to happen next week on Dynamite to the Cowboy if he don't want to step up? Son, you're going to get stepped on. Wow. Well, the message sent to the challenger, but you know Hangman Adam Page realizes he is walking into the most important match of his life next Tuesday night at Dynamite. The AEW Control Center moves straight ahead as we have another great week of action coming up with two big events. Hey, everybody, it's Tony Schiavone. First tonight, yes, tonight, we bring you a very special edition of AEW Tuesday Night Dynamite live on TBS. 
beginning at 8, 7 central. It's Title Tuesday tonight. A very special Tuesday night broadcast comes to you from Cincinnati and the Heritage Bank Center. And then this Friday, we bring you AEW Rampage live on TNT, beginning at 10, 9 central. Friday's live Rampage will originate from Daly's Place in Jacksonville, Florida. First of all, tonight's live Tuesday broadcast will feature four world title matches. And we start at the top as AEW World Champion John Moxley, Cincinnati's own, will defend against former champion Hangman Adam Page. And this here is the old Riverfront Coliseum. I started working there when I was about 16 years old. It was called the Crown. Then it became First Star Center, and then it became US Bank Arena, and now it is Heritage Bank Center. And I pretty basically grew up hanging around, hanging out down here under these bridges, under the overpass, hanging out and getting into trouble, doing whatever that kids do. Started here doing event staff, security, being an usher, hanging around, man, the smoking doors, chilling out on the vomes, six bucks an hour. So I literally grew up in this arena. So to bring AEW to Cincinnati, an overlooked city that never got the big pay-per-views, that never got the big events, was never an A-town, to bring an A-show like Dynamite, World Championship match, special Tuesday night dynamite, October 18th. That's very satisfying for me. I want Cincinnati to become as big a wrestling town as there is, right up there with uh, Philadelphia and Chicago and New York. And I think October 18th is gonna be a good first step. Our live audience here in Cincinnati, they love this maniac. Winning the AW World Championship for the first time is the biggest accomplishment of my professional career. I had been wrestling for 13 years. I had never won a world championship. No one over this match. Yeah. It validated something in me that, you know, I was worth it. I was deserving of this because a lot of times it felt like, you know, I could have been the tag along in the elite. In a lot of ways, I might would say that not only do I respect John Moxley, uh, I, I would say that. Maybe I look up to him. How weird does it feel to be driving around your city as the champion? There is a sense of accomplishment coming back to Cincinnati. I left here with nothing. None of this was here back then. This was all just parking lots, pavement. And I came back with everything I could ever want. A woman of my dreams, a beautiful daughter with all the proverbial spoils. You know, so to come back as kind of a uh, conqueror is, is, there is a sense of satisfaction in that. How does it feel when you have all this and now you're gonna be in your hometown and someone's trying to take it away? Me and Mox have been here in AEW for three years, and in three years, I think we've beaten just about everyone there is to beat. He's beaten them, I've beaten them, except for each other. They have come from far and wide, all shapes, sizes, and styles, to try to knock me off the top of the mountain. It's hard to find a weakness in someone like John Moxley. They all think they want what I got, but they walked a mile in my shoes. He's hard hitting, he's intense, he's fast, he's explosive, he's tough, he has good cardio, he has good strength. Being the world champion is a dirty, dirty job and you gotta be ruthless and indiscriminate. These three years in AEW, I have relied on myself, I've relied on my hard work, my intuition to get me where I am, but more than that, I've relied on the fans I feel like that's where, that's where I get my energy from. And I know that walking into Cincinnati, well, that ain't my hometown. And I'm not the hometown favorite. 
But for the AEW World Championship, the championship I've defined, my own arena, my own city, I do not envy the man that has the task of taking away what's mine on that night. On Dynamite, Moxley got in the ring with me. He said he respected me. He said he respected my talent in the ring. He said he respected the kind of man I am, and that meant a lot to me. And then he called me kid. You're a sweet kid. I'm a 31-year-old man. I have a son. I have a mortgage. I've been a world champion. Like a lot of kids around here, you say a lot of stupid I've been through some that you've seen before, and I've been through some that you don't even know about. I hesitated in May, and it cost me this championship. I went for the trios championship with my best friends, and we failed. And I've had to watch as week after week they seemingly disappeared. My old friends, they have disappeared. But I am still here because I am a man. Last year in the casino ladder match, at the end of the match, me and Moxley were on top of the ladder. Back and forth, back and forth, punches, back and forth and back and forth, and who broke first? It wasn't me. I ain't a man on this planet. It's gonna walk into my home, my city, my home arena, walk into my living room and take anything out of my house, my property, no way. No world champion, no respect, no survivors. On October 18th, I step into the ring with AEW world champion John Moxley with the championship on the line. And it's his hometown, Cincinnati. I'm gonna leave my house, I'm gonna walk down Vine Street, I'm gonna show up at Heritage Bank Center, and I'm gonna break your face. I'm angry! I'm frustrated! I can't sleep at night! I've been choked till my face turns blue! And I've been beaten in that same face over and over! And I keep coming back because I am a man! Damn it! If you get the shot to take me out, I don't think you got it in your guts to pull the trigger. And it's his hometown. It's his championship. But the 18th, is my night. On October 18th, there will be one last man standing here in AEW. I will become champion because I'm the man with the plan, the man with the chip, and the man who is a generational talent. Now here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna tell a story, and I don't care how long it is, you're gonna listen because whether you realize it or not, you owe me that. Cincinnati, bear with me. When I was 19 years old, training in the business for one year at the Creative Pro Wrestling Academy, one faithful day I get pulled over to the side by my trainers, Pat Buck and Brian Myers. And they, yeah, they're good guys. They're good guys. And they say, kid, Congrats, your hard work's paid off. We got you WWE extra work. And to some, that might not sound like a lot, but to me at the time, it was the only show in town and it was an opportunity. And an opportunity is all I needed. So I packed my best gear, I put on my best suit, and I drove to the Barclays Center, didn't I? And then, me and the extras, we were all put together and we were then greeted and spoken to by none other than Sir William Regal. You proceeded to tell us you are all gonna go to the ring and have tryout matches before the show's proceedings tonight. You then, you then had us up against a random opponent. We were put in a single file line and my match was set to go on second. And the first match gets in the ring, two young dreamers. And the onlookers were as follows. Arn Anderson, Dean Malenko, Adam Pierce, and William Regal. They then locked up, and Dean Malenko rang the bell and he said, get out. The pressure was on, man, then it was my turn. 
I was shaken like a leaf. I got in that ring, but I knew I wasn't fighting for a contract. I was fighting for my life, because make no mistake about it, Will, professional wrestling is my life! After the match was over and I was soaking wet, I was victorious, and every single one of you looked at me like I had eight heads. And then you pulled me away from the group and you said, follow me. And you brought me to a separate room where it was just the two of us. And you said, kid, you got three minutes to sell yourself to me. Go. And boy, did I. And by the time I was done talking, your jaw was on the floor, wasn't it? And then you picked it up, and I'll never forget what you said to me. You said, kid, I'm going to get you a job here today. And then what happened, huh? And then what happened? And then I realized in that moment, I did it. I was no longer going to be looked at by all the naysayers as a five-foot-nothing ADD riddle Jew boy. No, no. I was going to be a superstar. I had done it. My dream was about to be accomplished. And then, with a crooked grin, you said, how old are you, kid? And I said, 19 years old, sir. And you looked at me and you said, kid, I'm sorry, but you're much too young. My heart stopped, my dreams evaporated, and that fell swoop. And in that fell swoop, my heart stopped, but then you resuscitated me with your version of hope. You said to me, kid, I don't like to put my name on many people, but when I do, they get jobs here. The list is small, but the list is as follows. Claudio Castagnoli. Brian Danielson and Cincinnati's own John Moxley. And kid, here's what I want. I see something in you. When you become of age, I will personally put my name on you. But until then, I want you to go home. I want you to work your ass off. And every single month, I want you to send me a match and a promo. So I went home, didn't I, Will? And I busted my ass. Month one, you respond to me, Maxwell. Thank you so much. I look forward to reviewing your progress. Month two, Maxwell. Thank you so much. I look forward to reviewing your progress. Then month three came along, didn't it, Will? Month three came along. When you told me to send you a match and a promo every month, month three comes along, and you send me a promo that I have saved to my phone to this day. You send me a promo, smirk all you want, you son of a bitch. You send me a promo, you send me a promo that I have read every single day since. Let me read it to you here today live. Here's the email you sent me. Max, I'm a very, very busy man. I've got talent from all over the world to watch, and I've just had to sit for minutes watching you, and you put this in quotations, show me your acting skills. Do not reply to this, but how would this make me say, oh, I know, let's hire Max. Make a name for yourself in the wrestling world and you'll get noticed. That means being a high-level performer. When you do, trust me, I'll know. Unfortunately for you, the game has changed. The WWE exclusively hires the best talent in the world to the top world-class athletes. When you're one of them, then maybe send me your stuff. Yours sincerely, William Regal. That's the email you sent to a 19-year-old kid, a child with a dream, and you squandered it! Look at me, look at me, no, no, look at me. This is real life, goddammit. When I read that email, when I read that email, I, when I read that email, I wanted to quit professional wrestling, I wanted to quit my life. Look me in the eyes when I say this. That email made me want to kill myself.
And then, and then I realized that if I did, then you and all the naysayers would win, and I couldn't have that. Now could I, Will? No, no. And now here we are, and my God, have the tables turned. The year is 2022, and you are nothing more but a sad, withered old man who got fired! Who got fired. And now you have snuck into my company like a flea-ridden rat by sticking to talents far better than you ever were, like a succubus. And you know who I am? I'm MJF! Oh yeah, I'm the 26-year-old kid who's on top of this business. I'm a generational talent. And I'm also the man who your former employers now would be willing to take several human lives simply to get me to put pen to paper in the bidding war of 2024. I want you to look at me nice and good when I say this, Regal. I read that email every single day, but not, not to put a chip on my shoulder, no, no. I read that email whenever I need a good, hearty laugh. Because that's what you've become to me, Will. Nothing more than a joke. And you know who I'm about to become? The AEW Champion of the World! Because my name is Maxwell Jacob Friedman, and I'm better than you, and you know it. Job done. You mentioned being 19 and being a child. At 16, I left home and went to work on a carnival and was having to fight grown men to get into this industry. I wasn't trying to cast you aside, Max. I saw exactly in you what I'm seeing now, and it's making me happy. I saw somebody who was going to be a big, big star. I wanted a light of fire under your backside. One, because we live in a day and age where you can't have grown men smashing your face in when you're 16 and when you're 17 and when you're crying every single night that you go to bed and there's blood running out of every hole in your body and you want to quit but you won't let yourself because at 17 I said no I will not quit I will keep going because I am going to be a professional wrestler and if a bloody email is what it took to get you to this place and you've held on to that for seven years. You've had it easy, sunshine. <laughs> and that's exactly what you've had. You've had it easy because you mastered something that you seem to forget. We spent several times together where I told you, this is what you need to get good at, sunshine. You need to practice. Every time you brush your teeth, you need to stand and talk and practice and get so people take notice of you. When you pick up a microphone, I could see how incredibly talented you were then. I watched you against Young Wheeler the other week. I can see what an incredible talent you are. You're 26 years old. Before you were born, I was insulting Mr. Shivani. I was beating people up, but I would never lay a hand on him. I'm what they call an ODV. That's an ordinary, decent villain. Anybody that steps between these ropes, that's fair game. But you never put your hand on somebody like Mr. Shivani. I wanted you to be where you are. I knew you had it in you. The only problem is you've let me down because you took shortcuts. You haven't. 
You haven't done anything to prove anything to me yet. Just because you're getting paid here doesn't prove anything to me. Just because you're making lots of money, that still doesn't prove anything to me. You hire people to do your bad work for you. You wear a, a, a ring to knock people out. I didn't need a ring to knock people out. When I used these, it was because I just like hitting people with them. <laughs> Max, don't take any shortcuts. You want to be a real bad guy? You want to be the devil? Then make a name for yourself by doing it right. Beat everybody that stands in front of you, and I don't care what liberties you take with competitors, just get to that place. But if you want to be the devil, show the world right now. Or are you going to just take another shortcut and so you can come out here and act like a victim and whine and cry? You still have a lot to prove. <laughs> William Regal has just completely undermined MJF. I, you know, I don't trust the thing that. Wait on, uh, now we're on the apron, and Moxley, go away, uh -oh, now uh -oh, Hangman, trouble. Dead eye on the apron, uh, Moxley spills God. to the floor, who will leave oh. Cincinnati as the AEW World Champion, keep an eye on it, in picture in picture. The AEW World Championship hangs in the balance here on Title Tuesday Dynamite, as Hangman Page and John Moxley battling, jockeying for a position on the top rope. Yeah, this has been a battle for sure. You can see the blood loss right now for the champion, Hangman Page, that maybe going for a top rope superplex. Oh, maybe look not. At that, look at that. Wow. Fall away slam right off the top. That's a tough, tough landing here. Make it a new champ here. Hangman, the legs are hooked, but Hangman slow to capitalize. Before this match started, we saw MJF up in the skybox watching. Then we took a shot of the skybox. He was gone. So not sure what that's about, but right now, this is a battle here for the title. Hopefully your words, Lord Regal, chased him out of the building. And look at this crowd on hand. Massive, massive crowd here in Cincinnati. Hangman Adam Page, the fourth ever AEW World Champion, could potentially regain that title here tonight. But Moxley was boom, looking Maybe for the paradigm shift or the death rider, but Hangman had it scouted. Nice drop. Stop driven. Hangman lands on Whoa. his feet. Why, so Lariat athletic. block. Oh. There's the comebacker. How about that left-handed Lariat? Yeah, that was awesome by Hangman. Oh! oh. Oxley, oh. the King Kong Lariat decked the challenger. That'd make Icky Woods proud. Wow. <laughs> Those who know. <laughs> the Icky <laughs> Shuffle, baby. <laughs> We're in Cincinnati. That's for absolutely. <laughs> Look at that hangman page got turned inside out by the champion. And yeah, now they're, they're checking him here. They got a doctor is checking him. Now, Doc that was Samson a nasty landing, guys. In the ring and as much damage as John Moxley likes to do, he wouldn't want the match to end like this. Oh, no. I think you're right. I agree with you. And referee Paul Turner. Well, this is a this is a man in hangman who He's had issues a little bit yes. with that upper body, shoulder, neck area. So that's a serious thing here, guys. Oh yeah, it's yeah, ready. It you see the doctor in the ring. Yeah, but it's—I mean—a great job by Paul Turner identifying this situation, calling for the medical expertise, and now the match has ended. Well, let's see if we can get an announcement. I hope, hope I was. I was watching earlier while I was getting ready, and a little, little, little. I Man, he was talking a lot of shit. 
And I usually just let him talk his shit because basically he's not worth breaking a knuckle on. But the Yankees didn't go in extra innings and we still got some TV time. So, if MJF, you want to prove just who the hell you say you are, why don't you get your little suburban ass out here and my ring in Cincinnati right now? Whoa. Looks like he's going to answer the call here, doesn't it? Let's see. Well, there he is. He's and got the oh, he's champ. got the ref and the champ. You're right. We're going to have another match. MJF. Yes, you did, Duke. He can challenge for the AW World Championship at any time. It is now the time for him. It looks like it is. He's bringing that referee. Look at Regal saying, what are you doing? He's still got his street clothes on. He went... Well, he figures Mox is not 100%. He just well, went through this war, lost blood. Yeah, now would be a good, I would guess, now would be a good time. Ever the opportunist is MJF, why not? Moxley battered and bloodied, but still the AEW World Champion, and he could be facing off with MJF right now. Title Tuesday, indeed. You know, MJF still fired up, still emotional. You can see it on his face based on what the... Look at that. But based on the re what he said, the stuff with Regal, that yeah. stuff was pinning him for a long. Wait a minute. Hold on, let's listen. Wait, MJF just handed that, handed the chip. It's coming back, Jeff. Is Give me a mic. You want to talk about me cutting corners? Nah. You want to talk about me being a man? These people know I'm a man. Here's what's gonna go down. I'm gonna cash that chip in, but when I do, I don't want you at 50%. I don't want you right after a match. I want you 110%. I don't want any excuses. I wanna make sure that when I beat you clean, smack dab in the middle of the ring, that there's not a goddamn question that I'm better than you, and you know it. I'm cashing my chip in full Dear! Wow! Because for the first time, look at me when I say this, Regal, you piece of shit! For the first time in my miserable life, I'm gonna earn it. Whoa! I, you know oh. what? I, I guess Regal got in the head of MJF. I mean, what we heard early, those com that conversation in the ring. Yeah, MJF always won to cut a corner, always won to use underhanded tactics. But now we have our main event for Full Gear live on Saturday. Hold on, hold on. You. Guys, we can't even get a mic that works. The show's going downhill. I'm going to tell you exactly what you're going to earn. You're going to the heel of my boot in your mouth. You're gonna earn your teeth rolling around in the inside of your mouth going down your... You have earned my fist going directly up your ass. You have earned your esophagus, your throat, your larynx getting squeezed until your head turns purple and it pops off like a Pez dispenser. You have earned, at full gear, a date with destiny. A date that a lot of people don't even make it out of the ring standing. A date with John Moxley. A date with the best wrestler in the world. A date with the AEW World Champion. We're gonna find out exactly what you're made of, and I'm gonna make you an example and show the whole world that getting in the ring with me is dangerous as all hell. Saturday, November 19th. This is the Tidewater edition of the AEW Control Center. What's up, everyone? I'm Tony Schiavone. Tonight, AEW Dynamite returns to the Chartway Arena in Norfolk, Virginia. We take the air live tonight on TBS at 8, 7 central. For our fans in Norfolk, Hampton, Virginia Beach, Newport News, tickets available at AEWTIX.com. Tonight, the AEW world title will be on the line. 
as the champion John Moxley defends against Penta El Cierro Miedo. This past Friday, while we were in Jacksonville for AEW Rampage, John Moxley arrived looking for competition. The challenge was quickly accepted. I should be celebrating. I should be at home in the winner's circle, eating an ice cream cone. After all, I just knocked out the number one contender with a shot that would put a hole in a 57 Chevy. But I'm not happy. I'm not satisfied. I came here to Jacksonville for the sole purpose of walking into the con's office and saying I want to pick up on Dynamite next week right where I left off. Hey man, you only live once, and I've wasted a lot of time in life. I don't want to waste any more. I'm good, I feel healthy, and if there's anybody left in AEW that I haven't beaten, I plan on finding them. And that man is going to have to have zero, zero fear. Hey, steps. Morgs, you say la palabra miedo? Fear? You know something? El único luchador en AEW que tiene cero miedo. Soy yo. Sé que eres un buen campeón, pero nunca te has enfrentado a un luchador como yo. ¿Qué piensas si el próximo miércoles en Dynamite tú y yo una lucha por tu campeonato? <laughs> Penta says he heard the word fear, and the only wrestler in AEW who has zero fear is Penta. Now he knows that you're a great champion, but you've never faced a man like Penta. So, what do you say next week on Dynamite, you go face to face with him for the AEW World Championship? And you know what? You are looking the next AEW champion. You don't think I speak Spanish? Listen, Maxwell. Whoa, 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 Renee, don't hurt yourself. I got it from here. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil has arrived in Virginia! And I got one solitary question, Virginia. We got any devil worshippers in the house today? Now, Ravish and Renee, a beautiful woman, all the disgusting pores watching at home would love to lay. What do you got for me? Uh, MJF, tonight John Moxley is putting his AEW World Championship on the line against Penta. Should he retain, you will be facing John for the title at full gear. How do you feel ahead of a match that monumental? How do I feel about wrestling John Moxley? Do you mind if I borrow this real quick? You mean, you mean, you guys mean this guy? MJF at full gear. I'm gonna mash your bones, man. I'm gonna drink your blood. I'm gonna gargle your piss. Cause I'm John freaking Moxley. That guy, is that who we're talking about? Sure, yeah. Okay, listen, Renee and Virginia, I love you, baby, first of all. Let's just talk about that real quick. With all due respect, for all your shortcomings too. With all due respect, and I do mean with all due respect. When I think of Jonathan, only one word comes to mind, and that word, it's got three letters, and it starts with an M, and that word is ma 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 man Max, you can't just say with all due respect and then say something insulting like that. Renee, with all due respect, shut your mouth. Listen! Last week, when I said I was gonna earn it, I meant every single word. However, I might have got a teensy weensy bit out of control there when I said I was gonna wrestle the whole match clean, okay? Let's just talk about that. I meant like relatively clean, okay, Virginia? What, I'm still MJF, let's get real for a second. But, but, there was one thing that really got under my skin, and it was when that disgusting, flea-infested, elderly rat, William Regal, decided, yeah, he does suck, decided to tell me 
to tell me that he didn't use his brass knuckles because he needed to, he used them because he wanted to. Alluding to the fact, Virginia, that I can't beat his boy John Moxley without my dynamite diamond ring. What do you guys think of that, huh? Yeah, I think it's bold too. So you know what? I'm gonna make a promise here tonight for one night and one night only at Full Gear when I go for the grandest prize of them all. I promise I will not use my dynamite diamond ring. Because, Will, I don't need it. The only thing I've ever needed to be a success in my life is a grudge. And trust me, I'm chock full of them. See, I've taken every grudge, Virginia, and I've mashed it down into a chip, and I have put it uh, directly on my shoulder. And come November 19th, in my backyard, the metropolitan area, Newark, New Jersey, I ain't fighting Regal, I ain't fighting Moxley, I ain't fighting Penta, no, no. I am fighting every single sorry scumbag who ever told me I wasn't good enough. And I am going to take this heavy chip off my shoulder and shove it down each and every single one of their throats when I become your new AEW Champion of the World! Because I am a generational talent. Max, 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 Max. I get it, I get it. You want John Moxley at 100% at full gear, and trust me when I say, we won't lay a hand on that man, right? Perhaps you got a little bit comfortable since you've known me for a very long time. So Virginia, we're gonna cut Stokely some slack, huh? If John Moxley gets past Pentagon tonight in the main event at full gear, I need him 110%. So him and Regal and all his weirdo fanboys got no excuses when I beat him in that ring. So you don't go near him, you don't lay a hand on him, hell, you don't even look at him. Or you're fired. catchphrase in three, two, one, because my name is Maxwell Jacob Friedman, and I'm better than you. Well, MJF enlisting the firm to skip to the front of the line, but it seems that he has no more use for them. He wants Moxley or Penta at 100%. The only man to hold two AEW World Championships simultaneously is Pac. The World Trio Championship, the All-Atlantic Championship. Penta wants to join the same club as his co-champion, but John Moxley not going down without a fight as expected, but the kick to the knee. Setting him up right here. This is where Penta is extremely dangerous. It's one of the hardest hitting shows, top to bottom, oh! Oh, that we've ever had. Think about the physicality we've seen tonight. Diving foot stomps, and now Penta Fair. Oh my God, he's gonna get him here, guys. New champion, right One, here. Two, got it. Oh my goodness. Dude, Mox landed right on top of his beam, man. I don't know how he kicked out. I am, that, that's, that's gotta be impossible. Watch this impact. Look at the head. Oh, oh geez. God, you my. can't defend yourself, your arms are trapped. Yeah, that left shoulder. Fired up off the mat at the last possible moment. That was 2.99 ad infinitum. Now, I wonder if Pender's getting frustrated because he hit him right now with his move. And, oh, no! Boom! Paradigm shift! Go for another one. Oh, no! Death Rider! Two in a row from Moxley, and he retains! Now, the Still! Oh, Alien Wrestling World Champion!
champion, John Moxley. That's a hell of a match there. Yeah, sometimes you win, sometimes you earn. He earned it, guys. He certainly did, but did you notice that smirk from Moxley? I think John Moxley knows he escaped by the skin of his teeth. Oh, boom! Paradigm shift! Go for another one. Oh, no! Death Rider! Two in a row from Moxley! And he retains! The winner of this match and still all Alien Wrestling World Champion, John Moxley! That's a hell of a match there. Yeah, sometimes you win, sometimes you earn. He earned it, guys. He certainly did, but did you notice that smirk from Moxley? I think John Moxley knows he escaped by the skin of his wait, teeth. Wait, 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 wait! What the hell? That's, wait, wait, that's Morris W. Morrissey! Big Bill! The Firm! The Firm, for sure! The Firm has hit the ring, and now Ethan Page is in there. There you see Lee Moriarty and the guns. I mean, this, the is, guns. this is after MJF told Stokely Hathaway, stay away! What a shot right there. Mox after this brutal battle with Penta getting attacked here by the firm. And that's Lee Moore. Well, there's and Stokely. It. Yeah, Stokely's coming out. Well, look at the face of Stokely that time. Almost defiant. And doing Max said. W. Morrissey just raining down right hands on the head of the AEW World Champion. Hey, this Morrissey, man, look at the size of this man. I can never get over how big he is. Well, here well, comes, yes, some help out here. Yeah, we need some help. I can tell you that because it is basically what seven on one. All right. We Hold on. Wait, wait. You hearing this, guys? Yeah, we got some, something going on in the back out of our vents. The locker room. No one can get in. No one can get out. Obviously, the door has been changed shut. I gotta get some bull cutters. The, the Blackpool yeah, Combat Club. They had said that they have to discuss all the things going on, but they, they've they're, been they're trapped in that. They're locked in it in their own room. So they could not help John Moxley at all. And now the firm just free to run roughshod all over the AEW World Champion. He is at their mercy with nobody to help out. We heard MJF earlier say to Stokely emphatically, you know, I, I, oh, I don't God. know what's going on here, guys, but Mox is about to get worn out here. Yeah. Now Austin Gunn with the chair in hand. Oh, Moxley! He's a fighter. But oh, but Ethan Page! The numbers are too great here, guys. Absolutely, it's way too great. And nobody to help him. This is horrible. And remember, MJF used the firm to take the shortcut to whoa, the whoa, top. Oh, that's MJF here. He's, hold on, look. What's he, he's conflicted. You can what see his force. face. He's got Moxley. He's got Moxley coming up in full gear. He wants that help, and he don't want to help. What's he going to do here? Well, he's walking back. Moxley's all alone. And now just leaving John Moxley to the firm. Well, you know what? Hey, I kind of don't blame him. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Hey, hold on. Wait a minute. Here he comes. MJF charging in. Oh, he's coming in hot here. He's kicking these guys all off of, off of Mox. Hey, hold on. Hey, he said he, he yeah. heard it before. He just said to stop me, you're fired. He did fire him, right? MJF had the firm on retainer. And he Six told them not to touch five. John Moxley. Six. Holy cow, that came out of nowhere. And you want to, I mean, you talk about how dangerous W. Morrissey is. Ethan Page as well, just vicious. Especially with that Taekwondo background, with that kick. Even Stokely's getting in on wearing out the former guy they work for yes, in MJF. So much for that retainer. You fire the firm, and they're going to take their revenge. They are just beating the hell out of MJF out of nowhere. First, they beat up Mox. They are completely out of control. They should be fined for this. They oh, should man, be this, maybe suspended for all of this. I think this is just beginning, Shivani. Look at that grin on Ethan Page's face. All ego. Ethan Page now has MJF up. He goes edge. For the Eagles edge. MJF just sent crashing to the mat. That was a sickening thud right there. Good Lord. What a statement made by the firm here tonight. Not only a, an assault on the AEW World Champion, John Moxley, but an assault on the man that will face Moxley on Saturday, November 19th at Full Gear. They are just tossing around MJF like, like he's garbage. We had security come out to try to help. They couldn't help out. The Black Hole Combat whoa, 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 Club. I think W. Morrissey is fixing to do something real bad. Watch came off, and you can see the look in that man's eyes. 
Morrissey. Now, oh, look, MJF right. trying to fight out there. But Kid, the, kids fighting, man. The number's just too great for MJF. It's just, yeah, it's definitely too many men. Oh, he was clear. worn out. He's, not, he's da damn near not even around. He's hurt so bad. Cleared off the timekeeper's table. And Morrissey with the, the oh. grip around the throat of MJF. MJF fighting at the very end here, guys. Look at this. Well, you might, at the very end, you might be right, because this is going to be ugly. Oh, no. MJF. God Almighty. God Almighty. The table. Neither the champion nor the challenger are going to walk into full gear at 100%. Well, coming up live this Friday night at Rampage, Wardlow defends the TNT Championship against Matt Taven. Then next week at Dynamite, like Darby Allen versus Jay Lethal. All Atlantic Championship match, Orange Cassidy versus Luchasaurus and Ray Fenix. And we will keep an eye on this situation. We'll have more for you this Friday night, live at Rampage. Oxley the King Kong Lariat. Big time from downtown. Down there in Cincinnati near Skyline, Tilly. <laughs> Moxley. Ripping the chest of Menard with the chop. And now Moxley trying to bring Menard back down the hard way. Moxley could have it. The leg hook, no. And oh, he maintains control of the ankle. And now wrenching on the ankle of Menard. That ankle lock. Yeah, it's gonna be so painful. Very guys. painful. One of the easier moves to uh, execute. Yes, easy, but so painful and, and effective. But those up kicks from Menard, you notice the heel of his boot was going right to the side of the head of John Moxley. Menard, the sunset flip, a tap oh, Moxley on the regal knee. You saw that lateral press here. Going for the cover, got a near fall to John Moxley. But you notice Moxley was already positioning his hands to interlock with Menard, anticipating the kick out and readying himself for these stomps to the side of the head. The only thing Menard oh, oh, turned his head. There's another cutter. Turn you, turn you back. Turn around. That just, no. that, that's the money right there. And it's just two guys against one. The rig cleared up. And the trunks, but still Moxley able to kick out. I'll say this. They offered Jimmy Kane, and Menard tried to capitalize. I'm very impressed with uh, Matt Menard. The cover again. Moxley in serious trouble here. Well, we were seeing what you were talking about earlier in a, almost a handicap match for John Moxley. He had the advantage, but then after the cutter on Parker, turned his back to his opponent and you see the advantage now Menard has oh he may be trying to turn about his fair play and you hear John Moxley this great crowd at the Mohegan Sun Arena in support of John Moxley but Matt Menard yeah. the sports entertainer he's not used to delivering these, no. these downward kicks but look at Moxley oh Moxley transitions nice transition by Moxley looking for a submission victory here he and he got it Moxley got the submission winner of this match by submission the eight World Champion, John Moxley! Beautiful transition by Moxley into the rear naked sleeper. Moxley's like the Lou Gehrig of AEW Excalibur. Cut it, cut it, cut that awful theme music! Now what is this? Oh, of course, John Dudley Moxley! Hathaway. I know you're pissed! I know you're pissed to the highest level of pissivity after what we did to you on Dynamite. And I know you want to beat my ass, but guess what, Mox? You ain't gonna do nothing. You ain't gonna do Nathan. Uh, but if you want to fight a member of the firm, how about next week on Dynamite, you go one on one with Tiger Style Lee Moriarty. And if you want to see what he's capable of, we made something for you, because I know you've been hit in the head so many damn times, and we recognize that you are a special type of visual learner. I knocked out Willie Gouda to create a moment for myself. Now that I'm in the firm, there's no more sitting on the bench waiting for my number to be called. I'm snatching that ball and taking my shot. Tag us out Lee Moriarty's been a star. And now that y'all on my time, y'all gonna watch me shine. Oh, if you don't know what Tiger Style is, Tiger Style is knocking your mans out and smacking those yams. My name is Lee Moriarty, and this is Tiger Style. Interesting. 
You know Moxley's not going to turn down a challenge. Next or a challenge. fight. <laughs> or a fight. He just can't get enough. Moxley. Come on, tough guy. May not have to wait long to get his hands on a member of the firm. Lee Moriarty, you are a hell of a talented guy. Hell, the Blackpool Combat Club really likes you. But you are hanging out with the wrong crowd, my friend. And you just made the biggest mistake of your short career. If you want to match with John Moxley, you and anybody else in the back, all you had to do is ask. I'll see your ass in Baltimore, and you ain't ever, ever going to be the same, kid. Wow. Short to the point, Excalibur. Well, John Moxley. I thought he was going to do it. He accepted the challenge laid out by Stokely Hathaway, and he will have a chance to get his hands on a member of the firm coming up this Wednesday night at the champion here a bit to the limit. He's got to try to follow up if possible. And remember, this match just coming seven days after Moxley defended the AEW World Championship against Penta El Cerro Miedo. Then it was a five-on-one beatdown by the well, firm. Then on Friday night at Rampage, Moxley defeated Daddy Magic, Matt Menard in a World Championship Eliminator but match. The, the deal is, ex Calvin, it's like a team that's on a bye in the NFL, and another team went through a war, and then you catch them after that. It's good timing for Moriarty here. We just got popped. great timing. That's why we signed on, but it's not going in our favor right now, Taz. No, Come on, not. Lee. He's getting slapped around here. Yeah, those open hand shots, disastrous for Moriarty, but now landed some of his own. And now the kick caught. Oh, wow. Moriarty popped there up with a knee strike. Come on, Lee. Yes. On the back suplex, but right. oh, Moxley up to his feet. He's oh, amazing. He popped back up. Oh, oh German yes. suplex there. Lee and, popped up. Well, Lee popped up to your right. Oh, oh. Nice. side headlock takedown floats over. He's got himself a Kimura there. Double wrist lock. And now transitions into the Juju Katami. No, 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 Moriarty no, get out of this. with the submission defense. Nice roll through. There Good you go. This is where out. he's the best. Now the Border City stretch. This is locked in. There you go. This Lee is one of the best technical wrestlers on the entire roster. And Watch the right one. hand. Moxley is, er, Moriarty's been looking for this the entire match. No, don't give up that hold. You're right. Oh. You shouldn't have. I agree with you, Ethan. Yeah, yeah he, he got too overzealous that time. I think he did. He got a yeah. little too ahead of it. He goes back. Oh, there we go. Stretch, two inches. Wow. Moriarty hammering down on the neck, the head of Moxley, but Moxley, it's the cradle, two, no. Wow, what a counter, right out of that Border City stretch. And the hammer and anvil elbows by Moxley. No, 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 this could be You the, gotta get out of this. Yeah, this, you're, you're right, Ethan Page, because this This could is be, how I lost. Yeah, exactly, you know what those things feel like. Oh, and there's the Juju Katami. The Juju Katami, Moriarty forced to tap out. Here is one the AEW World Champion, John Moxley. Now the slam you heard was Ethan Page throwing down his headset yeah. in disgust and walking away. And now all ego, Ethan Page. Oh, he's here. Oh, he goes. He's on, on he's on a hop. Wow. Ethan Page's on a hop. Here, whoa. Oh, the hard boot into the face of Moxley. We saw that last week, and they just hit its mark right there. Heavy duty by Ethan Page. Ethan Page will be looking to win that AEW World Championship Eliminator Tournament culminating at full gear. The firm looking good right now, and the AEW Champion is not looking good. He got blasted after a battle with Lee Moriarty there. I understand we're going to be announcing more names for that Eliminator Tournament coming up Friday on Ramp. I got a big question for you. You haven't been seen on AEW television since the firm's brutal attack. So with your big match heading into full gear for the World Heavyweight title, how you feeling? How am I feeling? Um, you know, after the firm attacked me in a very cowardice fashion, uh, doctors informed me that if I wanted to be 110% come full gear, I definitely shouldn't be traveling on the road. And to be frank, the only thing I'm worried about is that match at full gear against John Moxley. See, this is the most important match in my entire career. But what I don't think wrestling fans understand is this is also possibly the most important match in the history of our sport. Allow me to explain why. This could be the potential crowning of the next face of the next generation of professional wrestling. You see, every once in a while, every once in a blue moon, really, we see people that lead the charge of a generation bring professional wrestling to new heights. Guys like Bruno Sammartino, Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair. 
Guys like Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold, The Rock, John Cena, all of these men were generational talents. And that is exactly who MJF is. So here's what's gonna happen. All I have to do to etch my name into history is to have a long, fruitful world title reign. And the only person that's getting in my way is John Moxley. Now, I'm not going to sit here, big cat. I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to pretend that John Moxley is an easy competitor to beat. See, I don't like you, John. I think you're a low-life scumbag piece of shit. I think you're from the slums of Cincinnati. And I think you have absolutely no class, but I do respect you. Because, John, you weren't born to be a world champion. Matter of fact, you were born with two left feet and not one single athletic bone in your body. However, I respect you because you had to work your ass off to become the man that you are today. Blood, sweat, tears, sacrifices. You had to defy all the odds doing 15-hour drives to wrestle in front of 15 people for $15. And you did it over and over and over again, honing your craft until eventually... You did the damn near impossible, John Moxley. You became the best professional wrestler on God's green earth. But know this. Come November 19th, you're about to lose that handle because I was born to not just be a professional wrestler, but to be the professional wrestler. I'm the guy who can come on the number one sports podcast in the world, pardon my take. I'm the guy who can do movies, TV shows, commercials, talk shows, and I can wave the flag of the AEW brand in hell. I can wave the flag of professional wrestling and bring pro wrestling back to where it belongs as something that everyone is talking about. Every single wrestling fan, promoter, analyst, and pundit is fully aware that that throne is for the taking and I'm the one who's going to take it. I'm so sick of waiting my turn. Ever since I entered AEW, I've had to get the spotlight stolen from me in my big moments. My first ever Singles pay-per-view match, the spotlight was on a neck tattoo. My first ever world title shot, which was against you, John Moxley, when you cheated, the spotlight was on Matt Hardy taking a fall like Humpty Dumpty. The first ever blood and guts match, I am standing atop of the cage with a crimson mask. I prevailed. That should have been my crowning moment. Instead, the spotlight was on Chris Jericho. Speaking of Chris Jericho, he stole the spotlight from me from a full calendar year. And then, on my big return, the spotlight was on a press conference. Well, know this, John. On November 19th at full gear in the tri-state area, Newark, New Jersey, in the Prudential Center. I am not waiting for the spotlight anymore. I am grabbing it. And you are going to have to take it out of my cold, dead hands, John. Your boy William Regal bet on the wrong horse. I don't need a dynamite diamond ring to knock your lights out. Because come full gear, the devil gets his due. Sir William Regal, how old was I when we first met? 25, 26, something like that? Back then I was young and full of piss and vinegar. I didn't have crippling arthritis yet. I could move around pretty good. I really thought I knew it all. I really thought I had it all figured out and I loved to talk trash, as you remember. I kept running my mouth over and over. I wanted to be just like you, feared and respected. I wanted to be a real top guy in professional wrestling. So to prove myself to you, to get my respect, I tried to pick a fight with you. And that did not go well. That did not go well at all. You tortured me. You physically tortured me, brutalized me, kicked the hell out of me. And it pissed me off, because I found out exactly where I was on the food chain. And it drove me to work harder, and train harder, and to grow, and evolve, and one day come back and get my revenge. And when I got another shot at you, I made it count. If you remember, I knocked you out with a knee to the face and ripped your ear off the side of your head. You do remember that. And you told me then, As you finally took me under your wing, you said, and now the real work begins. Now, who does that young, impetuous kid remind you of, Sir William? It reminds us of young Maxwell Jacob Friedman. 
whom I will face at full gear for the AEW World Championship. Now, I first wrestled MJF well over a year ago, probably the summer of 2020. He challenged me for the AEW World Championship, and he thought he had it all figured out back then. He thought this was his time. So I beat the hell out of him. I bloodied him up, and I sent him packing. I let him know exactly where he stood in the pecking order. But now, all these months later, he's come back around again for another shot. So the question is, what's gonna be different this time? I mean, who is MJF? It's hard to figure out. He seems to be having some kind of existential identity crisis right now. Who exactly is MJF? We know the MJF that he shows to the world. He dresses very nice. He wears a fake diamond ring. He wears clothes his mom bought for him at JCPenney. He wants to put on the air of somebody rich and successful. He talks the talk of a big time world champion pro wrestler, the kind he wants to be. But dude, I actually am a multi-millionaire, multi-time world champion, so you, you can't fool me. I ain't buying it. He calls himself a pillar, even though he has no idea what it feels like to have any weight on his back. What's more amusing, as MJF calls himself, the devil. The devil. He really does. MJF calls himself the devil. Dude, I have seen the devil. I have met the devil. I have looked into his eyes. I have met some very bad people, been some very bad places seen some bad people do some very bad things. And dude, you are not that. You are not that at all. Now I want you, as William Regal wants you, to fulfill your potential one day and put this company on your back. We are, after all, teachers. You can do your song and dance and the lead up to full gear. You can talk your trash, do your dog and pony show. I'm not worried about that at all. I'm worried about what you got in your guts because I'm going to bring it out of you. When you step into the ring in your hometown in Newark, New Jersey at full gear, just remember one thing. Everything you've done up to this point has been easy. John Moxley ready for the fight ahead of him at Full Gear Saturday, November 19th on pay-per-view. But you are gonna see something very, very special this Sunday at Full Gear. You're gonna see the world champion do what he does best. MJF is not challenging me. I'm challenging MJF. I'm challenging you to show me something. Show me you got some guts. Show me you got some balls. Show me something, MJF. Show me why everybody thinks you're going to be the future of this industry. Went Stokely half the way. What is this about? Oh, wait. Look at Lee Moriarty. He just rushed the ring and. Moxley sent him, oh, Big Bill, W. Morrissey, the blindside shot. And the Firm, yeah, Firm attacking heavily here yeah, and attacking Regal as well. And the Firm, the group that MJF used to secure the, 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 the poker chip to challenge for the AEW World Championship. They're holding Regal back while they take their match. <laughs> And MJF has it. Well, there he is. That's MJF. It looks like he's ready to go. And the last time we saw him, he was laid oh. out by the firm, and now he's laying out the firm. Drop the guns right there. And Lee Moriarty gets taken down. Now MJF inside the ring. Morrissey grabs him by the throat, but the low blow by MJF. And Ethan Page. Oh, he kicked his partner. And a low blow for Ethan Page, and a big left hand. Get up! Get up! MJF just cleared the field. MJF improbably coming hey, to the aid of his I opponent you, on Saturday. I get the hell out of 
of Connecticut before I firmly take my boot and shove it up your ass! You, John, while you're laying there, hopefully in a ton of pain, let me explain something. I did not save your ass because I like you, John, no. No, I saved you because I don't want any of your pissant Mark fan club making any excuses for you when I knock your lights clean out. No dynamite diamond ring necessary. Ain't that right, Will? When I got in this business, my ultimate goal was to become the best wrestler in the world. And I'm not an idiot, John. I know this Saturday in the Prudential Center, I'm in for the fight of my life. You're one double tough bad son of a bitch. But know this, I ain't the same kid I was the first time we fought for that piece of gold. You see, this time, you can dump me on my head as many times as you want. You can make me bleed buckets. You can snap, crackle, and pop every single ligament, joint, and bone in my body, but I will not stop because I need that belt more than I need water, more than I need food, and more than I need oxygen. Because when you're the man that holds the AEW world title, that makes you the best wrestler on God's green earth, and God damn it, it's my time! Now I heard you, John, I heard you last week when you said I'm not the devil. <laughs> That's classic. John, maybe I haven't been listening very well, so allow me to tell you the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. And this Saturday at Full Gear, you are going to find out that I am the devil himself because my name is Maxwell Jacob Friedman and I'm better than you you know I never really saw what the big deal is with you anyway but this weekend at full gear we're gonna find out. If you got it in here, if you can't find it in yourself, I will reach in and pull it out of you because that's my job. This Sunday? Show on Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Full gear, the training wheels come off. John Moxley, MJF collide this Saturday night at Full Gear and the AEW World Championship hangs in the balance. Who will leave the Prudential Center as the AEW World Champion? I think Mox is going to be surprised. He's in for a heavy-duty fight this Saturday night. And MJF better be ready for the fight of his life as well. And, and look, at, look at Regal. The final stop before Full Gear comes your way live this Friday night, Rampage, 10-9 Central on TNT, and immediately following Rampage, the